Yeah, got a lot of catching up to do today. I got tons of stuff to need to do. I need to go to Merit Seed, pick up uh, food plot stuff, and then I'm gonna pick up some mineral while I'm there. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta show you the, the video off that covert camera. I think that buck is incredible. It's a nice buck. And uh, I gotta go to Kaufman too, if I have time. Go evaluate a piece of property real quick. But uh, hey man, I'm getting beeped in here. I think it's my wife. Now what? No, weed eat, clean garage, finished deck. Well, I'll just paint the house while I'm at it. Yes, dear. Okay, I love you. You know, everyone, I'm no different than you or anybody else. We had a lot of things to do today, but you know what? Family comes first. Not just the reality of being a deer manager, and you're watching Reality Deer Management. Welcome everybody to Reality Deer Management. This episode is going to be showing you how to use the resources of one of our sponsors, Holmes Laboratory. And what we're going to be doing on my piece of property today is taking water samples, soil samples, and protein samples. We're going to show you how easy this is, how not to be afraid of it, and how quickly it, it can be done. All right, here we are at one of my water holes just off one of my food plots. Now this water hole here gets a lot of use. When we set up the deer cam over it, it just, it's constant, constant utilization. You know, all the time sitting there watching the video off the deer camera or sitting in a tree stand watching the deer drink out of it, I always wondered, you know, why are they coming to this water source when there's plenty of water elsewhere? You know, could it be the water quality is really good? But you know what? We don't know the answer. But this is how we do find out the answer. We take a simple water bottle, 16 ounce water bottle. You know, we're going to have it labeled, it says water hole. And Hunter, if you could write a number one, because this is water hole number one. All right. Thank you, Hunter. All right. All we're going to do now is take a, just a water sample. But first thing we have to do is kind of clean out the bottle itself. And all we do simply is fill up the bottle. Okay, now we're not looking for bacteria, we're just looking for pH. So we're just going to empty this out. You try to get no debris in it. Okay, Hunter, would you like to do that? Okay, let's fill it, fill it up. Okay, we just put the lid on it, like so. That's our water sample. How easy was this? Now we're going to send this off. And basically, we're just going to find out what the pH of this water is. All right, we're at our next sample site. What we're going to be doing is collecting protein samples off of native vegetation. Now, we were driving to one of our uh, sites that I wanted to take samples off of, saw a lot of browse, but noticed on the way over to it, there was a lot of uh, ragweed, of all things being nipped off by deer and uh, so we decided to stop and take samples of that and all you really have to do it only takes all this stuff that we're going to be showing you today is real simple it's nothing to be afraid of you can't really mess it up too much and all you need is a pair of clippers and just a, a quart size bag make sure you label it what site the date as well and what we'll do is we'll clip this uh, clip the ragweed that's in the area and uh, fill it up as much as we possibly can seal it off and then we'll just take it to uh, Holmes lab and when we take the water sample and the soil sample. Well 
Well, we're here at the third and final thing that we're gonna be doing on the property for uh, taking samples. And it's the one that the people I believe are the most afraid of because it, it's just too technical or I don't know the reason. But a lot of my clientele just don't like to do it or when you're doing seminars, people just stay away from it. And it is the most important thing when creating a food plot. Now we're gonna show you basically the technique, what you need to do. It is very quick and it is dirty. And um, it doesn't take too long to do when done correctly. Now this is a, a soil probe. We use it a lot, obviously doing soil sampling and stuff. It's a really neat tool, very easy to use. Um, but about 98% of the public doesn't have this. So we're gonna throw that out and we're gonna use this thing. The old fashioned way, a spade shovel. We're gonna teach you how to use this, how to take a soil sample with that. We're just gonna stick it in the ground at the feed plot site. And you want about six inches, you push it in, okay? Move it back, okay? Pull it up, go behind, and just take a little sliver, okay? And just put it in the bucket. That's it. Simple as that. All we have to do now is go about nine more of those. And what you want to do is do a zigzag pattern through the food plot taking the samples. And what we need to do now, Hunter, is just basically mix the soil up with our hands or you can use it with a shovel or whatever, but we'll use our hands because we like playing in dirt, right? <laughs> okay, so what we need to do is just mix it, all right? Help me out here, Hunter. Smush it around, mix it, okay? Good job, buddy. All right. If you want, hold this bag open, okay? And I'll take that mixed soil and we'll put it in there, okay? Get a couple more, we'll fill the bag up for guys at Holmes Lab. Thank you, Hunter. All right, what do you think, that enough? Look good? All right, looks good to me too. Okay, what we need to do, there's a sample. Get out of it. All we need to do now is just mark what food plot this is and the date on it, and then uh, we're good to go. So we got our three samples, right, Hunter? All right. Well, we are driving. We were gonna send our samples through the mail to Holmes Lab, but we decided that we're gonna drive there. We got our samples, we got our water samples, we got our protein samples, rag of ragweed, and then also we have soil. So we are driving to Holmes Lab. We're gonna see uh, Mr. Gary. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Gary, how are we doing? Hi, Eric, I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you today. Good seeing you, sir. What, well, we what, got our samples, sir. Okay, what did you bring us today? Well, we brought you some water for you to drink. <laughs> well, thank Have you very test. much for yeah. coming this afternoon. And, yeah. How can I help you uh, as far as uh, the water? Um, do you have a description on that we might yeah, put on? Yeah, we, uh, we wrote on there with your uh, advice, water hole number one. Okay. Okay, that's... it's off a water hole, a man-made water hole that we made. Okay, okay. That's fine. It has no, it's just runoff, kind of, you know, stagnant kind of water. Had you ever tested the water before? No, no, we did not. Never before, okay. No, this is all going to be a first for us. Okay. And have you noticed the deer coming to that water yeah, hole and drinking? Yeah, we have a lot of deer activity at that site. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's you know, good. And, and, you know, sitting in a tree stand and all the times watching them drink it and and then, you know, putting a deer cam set up on it. We could be a lot of action. You always wondered, you know, what was the quality of it? And, and, you know, with this water, what are we actually looking for other than, like, the pH of it? Is there anything other beneficial stuff we can get? Oh, yes. Uh, from all the different water samples we've been doing for the deer industry, we realize that uh, sometimes a deer might walk right past the water, so we're going to be looking for maybe manganese and iron. If it's too high in those levels, it has a bad taste, it won't drink as much. Okay. Also, we're going to look, in addition to the pH, we're looking at the calcium level, magnesium, the sodium level, the chloride level, nitrates, sulfates. If those are too high, it's going to be bad for their health, bad oh, for their really? nutrition. Okay. So, and that's when we get the report back, we're going to have a, a desired range over here that we'll be able to compare. Is this good quality water, or is yeah. this something that and, we should be aware of? And, you'll, and from that, you'll be able to tell me, hey, this is all right or not all right. That's what the test is all about. Okay, good, yes. good, good deal. Yeah, so all that's, right, well, we're looking forward to uh, getting that going on. And then okay. we got uh, samples of ragweed, of all things. Okay. okay. And we did what you, you know, we called in prior to, to uh, see how to do it, and hopefully we did do that. 
Uh, we took just a little top portion of what the deer were browsing on. We noticed okay. how far down, and sure. we just stuffed it in his bag um, and what have you. So other than, you know, the protein levels, I mean, what else can you explain a little bit about what we're looking for here? For, for this particular test, uh, for the nutrition, we're going to be doing the, the basic nutrition test. Uh -huh. uh, the protein, we know that's important because that builds muscles onto the deer. Yeah. And the deer, they have muscle, they grow antlers. That's what I've been learning at your seminars. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. go to. Milk production <laughs> but, and all that stuff. Yeah. But also, we realize that um, there's major minerals that could be in there because any deer, the reason they eat, they have to take care of their body. So, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium. Trace minerals would be copper and manganese, zinc, and iron. Yeah, that's then we're going to give you an, an energy level such as what we call TDN, total digestible nutrients. And we're going to evaluate those. And the higher those numbers are, that means there's more uh, good nutrition in that ragweed. And, and that same test would work for whether you're raising uh, clover, alfalfa, yeah, absolutely. Uh, other plants too. Yep. But, but if they're grazing this, uh, there must be a reason. So let's find out yeah. how good that is. And you, you made a key word there, or you said a key thing, is that we can test about everything with that. I mean, we can take soybean samples. We can take briar samples. Yes. sumac etc all the stuff that we notice that they're browsing on right we do the very same test and then when you have those reports down side by side you can then compare how do the protein compare from one to the other yeah and that's going to be very interesting uh, this is a great experiment and yeah. good information you're going to find out yeah hopefully we're uh, doing what we're supposed to be doing <laughs> yes that's good and then we have what i'm sure everyone comes here for a soil sample okay and and uh, we, uh pretty simple to do you know, we just went out there, did the samples, and this is off a half acre food plot. And, um, you know, we're curious to see what uh, what we need to do lime fertilizer since we haven't done it in, a, in a quite a couple of years. So we're interested in see, you know, what we need to do this year. So, I mean, I mean, just uh, what we're we kind of looking for here other than the... Well, we realize that uh, everything starts with the soil. We're going to be doing a pH level in the soil, mm -hmm. organic matter, and also the major nutrients in this case, which we would call calcium, phosphorus, magnesium and potassium. Uh -huh. And we realize that if, if the pH is about 6.5 to 7, the soil works so much better as far as microbial activity, uh -huh. uh, as far as the absorption of the minerals up into the root system. So we're going to, going to give you recommendations for if it needs any lime, not only how much lime, but which kind of lime. Oh, great. And how much uh, NPK fertilizer, nitrogen, phosphate, and potash fertilizer. Because the better we can balance the soil, guess what, that ragweed's gonna be greater and, yeah, and more exactly. nutritious for the deer too. Yeah. And everything that, the mineral content that's gonna be in that ragweed, it all comes from the soil. Excellent. So th by doing all of these, you're gonna get a good program of uh, how, how is that food plot actually benefiting those deer? Absolutely. Are they gonna stay there? Yeah. Because they have everything they need. So I yeah. uh, thank you for bringing them by. This, this yeah, is yeah. a good evaluation. Uh, if this works for you, then you'll be able to present that to others. Oh, absolutely. Too. Yeah. absolutely. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reality Deer Management. It was just to show you how simple and how easy, how quickly all this can be to improve the quality of your deer herd and your property. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things, a lot of technical things that we didn't go over, but you know what? That's for another day, another, another time. It was just to show you how simple this stuff is and how to use your resources, such as Holmes Laboratory. We had a good day today, didn't we? Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, as always, as my grandpa used to say, no hurry, no worry, keep moving. And then with Drum and Log Wildlife Management, please support your local QDMA branches and the QDMA itself. How about we go check the deer camera? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go check that camera. Oh yeah, see you next time. Reality Deer Management was brought to you by Kaufman Realty and Auctions. Merit Seed. Kagera Fishing Lures. Holmes Laboratory. Covert Scouting Cameras. I don't know the answer. You got the. Uh, 